Well, you know, one of the things that's worth mentioning is that there's an awful lot of movement back and forth on Colmex, where you see the commercial banks creating tremendous volume but yet the price doesn't go anywhere. It's as if they're selling amongst one another in a cartel type of atmosphere where the illusion of, of movement and of trading and of volume, which outpaces most other commodities traded, um, creates this, this illusion that, that the market is freely traded when in essence, I would argue it isn't. And, but, it's it's not the volume of deliveries that we see because in some respects it's almost as if the banks are delivering to one another and then delivering back and working outside deals but it's the it's the deliveries outside of the ecosystem taken off of the exchanges and we're seeing that in copious amounts off the um London Metals Exchange in particular where they just came out and publicly said if the withdrawals are anywhere near what they were like in 2022 that there won't be any silver left in 2023 as, as we've talked ad nauseum about there's only 33 million ounces or so on the registered category backing the contracts that are open for delivery right now the amount of silver that is available is is ridiculously low when you see india's final numbers for 2022 came back at 304 million ounces uh, delivered to the country in 2022. Big money is taking possession of silver, but one of the things that I found very interesting in, in doing a little digging was that J.P. Morgan just came out with a report the other day that said China currently holds an estimated 96% of the global copper inventories. So when you talk about what conducts electricity, what is used in um conductivity in, in circuitry and in motherboards and in wiring and in all of the things that you would use silver and or copper for, I find it very interesting that these countries moving eastward, who we all, often talk about as accumulating all of the gold and all of the silver, evidently JP Morgan believes they're holding 96% of global copper inventories on top of 75 percent of global aluminum inventories which the london metals exchange ironically enough uh saw a 70 percent drop in aluminum inventories last year and now it's being told that uh telling uh, jp morgan is telling us that that uh, china holds 70 percent of the aluminum global aluminum inventories 54 percent um uh, 70% of corn inventories, 54% of wheat, 30% of soybeans, 22% of crude oil. Um, and, you know, up north of 90% of all the copper inventories. You can see what is being done. You can see that these countries view these commodities as wealth, as money. And so, yeah, I think it's it's very telling. This is a game where you have to let your... your um, you have to let your conviction in your gut really uh, win this battle uh, against the price that your eyes see because the biggest money in the world um, is without question preparing a war chest. And uh, whether it be India or China, um, whether it be any of the BRICS nations, uh, you know, we, we talk about the amount of gold that was delivered last year. Swiss customs data shows that Swiss exports of gold the countries, including China, Turkey, Singapore, Thailand, they all surged to multi-year highs in 2022, especially in Turkey. Last year, Turkey imported 524 tons of gold. And so Hong Kong, 354 tons, all coming from Switzerland. Uh, Singapore, uh, 69 tons. Uh, Thailand, 92 tons. Um, and so you're seeing even Saudi Arabia, uh, 47 tons. So, you know, in 2021, they only purchased seven tons. So I mean, you're talking massive amounts and all of these countries are the ones that we've been talking about, these BRICS nations who are, who are developing a war chest. So whether we talk about it being silver, which is really the crux to so many things, or base metals like copper and aluminum, um, you know, I think this is what you need to focus on when you see days like yesterday 
when the price just out of nowhere, the minute it leaves uh, London, at the, usually at the PM fixed on, a, on its way to New York, it gets hammered. And here we are back up again today. This is a whip song up and down, and the line in the sand is $24. People are fixated on technical analysis and on these big round numbers while the biggest money in the world is taking possession of it off the exchanges. That is the ball you need to follow, not the bouncing ball up and down volatility, above 24, below 24. That's all a bunch of noise. Uh, I think you have to focus not on the periphery, but on the ball. And the ball that you need to watch is the ball that is being shipped eastward to these countries. So that's really, I think, the message that I would would leave you and, and your listeners with that this is not ending and it's not stopping and it's not just with precious metals and when you see copper 96 percent of copper inventories globally owned by china people should stand up and take notice that to them copper is money and uh, in a world where you want to um, you know build things you know you sure need copper and, and china holds all the cards there not only do they hold most of the copper and aluminum and and, and all the commodities I mentioned, they also hold the lion's share of the, of the rare earth metals that are needed to build electric vehicles and the batteries. So we are focused on the wrong things in this country and countries like China who have become rich off of selling us their party favors are taking all of that money and putting into real things that will allow them to flourish for decades or centuries. Well, we focus on days and weeks and really focus on the wrong things like documents that left the White House somehow. And, that's just all noise and i think uh, those people who are paying close enough attention to the real important things would be wise to do what countries like china are doing and de-dollarize and stock up on real assets because in the end liabilities will eat you and assets will feed you and a country like china certainly knows that by the direction they're going